What's up, guys? This week, we talk about going from critic to criticized, harboring healthy delusion, and how Dale would fill a spaceship to save the planet. Stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the Straight Shot Podcast, Straight Shot Post Podcast, Straight Shot Studios Podcast. Who knows what we're calling this thing anymore? I don't. But we're here, showing up for another week as we try to build an animation powerhouse. Very early days. It's like negative, negative days. Are we even positive? That's a matter of how you want to look at it. Yes is the answer. I hope so. We're showing up. We're doing it. Pe- the fact that uh, nobody knows yet. Well, that's the fun part when they do know. Yeah. Yes is the answer. I definitely would say yes. Every day we're putting in the work. And this week was uh, no exception other than what's hard for me is I'm much more comfortable in states where where we have projects going on, like multiple projects going on um, because it's, it's simpler. The, the, the stuff that we're doing now working on ourselves, you know, it, it's scarier, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. So yeah, but that's yeah. what we're, that's what, the, that's what this week has really been filled with. It's a lot of self self reflection, self work. It's more stressful when there's like time, uh, time gated things to do. Uh, but especially like when I was project managing with a bunch of um, commercial projects, it was like that was my main focus and I don't have to think about anything else. But when we have this time and I am forced to do, I mean, I don't know that I'm doing like deep work. I'm watching you do the deep work, but still like in my own right, I'm not, it's not like straightforward as punching in numbers for taxes. I'm like writing things and, you know, generating things, writing emails and, that takes more thinking. So I do say that it is harder. It's harder to feel it. That's what I think it, you know, to feel it's what the progress it's easy. Oh, we got a plan project. Okay. We just finished a rough cut. Okay. We just got the notes in. Okay. We just color corrected. It's done. Mm. Right. Interesting. Whereas like now it's like, okay, we did one of the branding things. Now we got to wait two weeks for the next call. And, Okay, in the meantime, we got to kind of hunker down and make sure we're still making moves. At least I want to do it in the right order. I don't want to go out and spend money in marketing when we don't even have our branding figured out, right? So, yeah. you know, it's about coming up with, it's about staying aggressive in certain ways. We opened up studios. There's a lot happening there, but it's also very similar where it's like, okay, now I just have to wait for the book to be drawn and, and colored. And on my side, I'm just waiting for a bunch of like bank things to line up, which is so fun. Oh, the banks. So yes. fun. The uh, banks, yeah. Another very, very fast and responsive industry. Yeah, the banking industry. Oh, yeah. Actually, though, I mean, I was having a bunch of issues with Chase, not to like. Throw shade. Do it. Throw shade. But like, cause like Chase is my bank and I've had great experiences, but I was having trouble like making a business account. And then I, I don't, I ran into a bunch of like, you can no longer go on with their application. We'll get back to you. And then they never got back to me. Um, but so then I went to Capital One and in like three seconds I made a new account and I was like, oh, that was so easy. <laughs> so shout out to Capital yeah. One. But anyway, yeah, I don't want to bore you with the details of banks but yeah on the studio side that's what i'm dealing with right now trying to get that yeah, i'll recommend the book sorted out. uh i will teach you to be rich that's kind of what sorted out all of my financial and um banking related questions and in that book he also well he doesn't i don't know if he mentioned chase but i know he hates bank of america just like i do and guess yeah. what i'm reading good to great another business book also hate bank of america bank of america is the comparison company that sucked basically or like didn't do what in this case wells fargo is the is the good to great company talking about whatever trans you know the transition that they made and how they um became a great company so that's really what the book says. it's not saying even anything now it's saying it's talking about how you can go how does a company go from good to great and um and then but of course you could always go backwards if you don't continue to do those things um, but basically he's com- 
they they have the study and then they they have in order to have the study you have to have your sort of comparison company so bank of america is the one that they talk about sucking and i'm like i'm not surprised none of this surprises me from my experience with this company yeah so yes interesting i'd want to know why because i don't know the why probably poor leadership most, oh. most of it i'm just going to summarize the book like the most important thing you learn in the book is all of these great companies were led by what they call a level five leader so like it's all people at the end of the day that make the decision so of course it makes sense that you need the right people in place to make the decisions that would make you a great company right if you know what i'm saying so mm. it ends up st and he starts the book by talking about level five leaders then the rest of the team and then sort of what strategies they put in place it's quite interesting it, it, it's there's still so much value and relevant information to pull out but just like anything else essentially what they're doing is they're looking for the patterns and the strategies that took these companies from what was a normal or mediocre performance to something that extremely overperformed the market and, and and it's not that what i love about it is when you look at these patterns if you're if, if these the malcolm gladwells and et cetera, et cetera, these people that are so good at dissecting stuff they can simplify it so much so mm. you know good leadership mm -hmm. you can understand and then obviously they'll define what kind of good leadership um, mm. you know basically it's not gonna be that crazy it's like someone that cares more about the company than anything else essentially like if you dumb it dumb it dumb it down just ca cares about the game the people the company um, you know no ego type stuff I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that that's good leadership right and that you need somebody like that in order to make decisions yeah. that would look weird you know what I mean but that are best for the company so there's like that conversation, talking about hiring the right people, getting the right values in place and not being afraid of them being extremely smart or leaving, which I think is another really valuable chapter. But if you think about it, Grace, it's like, I would rather be known for having cultivated a team that would then go on to be CEOs of other businesses and top, top leaders in the industry, right? Rather than? Rather than being fearful. Oh, yeah. You understand and like finding yeah, ways yeah. to keep them down. Of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Of course we, you say it, but the thing is most humans actually don't aren't aware, you know, you have to really be aware of it. You have to be trying to do the thing. Um, you have to put some focus on it. Right. So like, yes, everybody would what say, yeah, of course, do? of course, of course. But then you're in the situation. You're afraid of your best. You're afraid that, Oh my God, these guys are better than me. They're going to take my job. And then all of a sudden, right like real life happens mm. so that's kind of what i mean where like it's good to read the book for somebody like me who already definitely thinks these things but there's just seeing hard data is hard data yeah like, you, the people are the things that matter the most at the company period and uh, that's been the biggest part of reading this book and the strategies they're employing are simple 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 which i'm glad simplicity is one of our core values because i'm like good yeah yeah uh, but yeah really simple what were we talking about yesterday? I was saying it yesterday. It was like, uh, you need to be able to be the best at it in the world. There needs to be economic promise and you have to be passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And like any of the strategies that they used to turn their companies around were at the center of those three circles. So people believed in what they were doing. They saw that there was an economic denominator there, profit per customer, profit per unit sold, profit per, you know what I mean, et cetera, that they could really... Yeah make a move on and then um and you have to think okay we can be the most convenient store in the world that's what we're aiming to do so it's really interesting because when you simplify it that much then yeah you can pretty much apply it to any business right which i think is important so i guess i've been doing you know i'm still learning and reading but it just doesn't feel th i think this is like that that's this is the trough where it gets boring you know it's just boring sometimes and, you know, it's uh, interesting yeah. that I just, I mean, I've he heard you say this this week of, you know, feeling like we're not progressing, like that feeling. And it's so interesting because when I, w what I was saying earlier about like, it doesn't feel like this work is harder. I meant as in like, it is harder for me to put in the effort to do this kind of work when there's no like time gated thing, but it doesn't feel any less like progress to me. Not even like this feels like more progress because it's harder for me to do it. And then the fact that I did it, I'm like, whoa, that feels much better than when I'm like 
just like being reactive to clients. I feel like everything that I do every day feels pretty equally weighted. It might that might be like a testament to like you and like how you run the company and how you make everyone feel like like hard work is what's important because I feel like I just keep doing that and then like every day whether I'm like I spent a whole day just doing VO or if I spent a whole day like paying the IRS like it feels the same to me good it still feels like progress <laughs> I mean that that's good that makes me happy I just think like yeah it is different everybody else has very tangible things they have to do every day right like snap team has to get their three to four videos out you know uh studios team has to get seven videos made and you know there's so much more to do there there's never things to run out and there's tangible progress for them like okay we got a website made okay we got a book made okay whatever but which is on purpose by the way like your time horizons i try to keep on a day just focus on today maybe i should get back into the habit because mine is so broad where i'm like thinking this year two years five years that it's like I mean, it feels that much slower that's uh, maybe maybe it's just a perspective thing i i don't know i feel like either way it, like sometimes i'll spend a whole day just doing the stuff for like the bureau like our business coaches or you know like and that that's planning for like the next five years or whatever and it still feels like the same kind of progress i don't feel like oh we're not progressing so as long as yeah. we do something yeah i wonder if part of it's that i'm like nothing's out Nobody knows. I'm not really working with people. Us also. I mean, like I'm doing my reviews and stuff, but like the writing, uh, which I guess we can get into is we're working on a, another book now. The writing is alone. You know, it's just like me in my head. And I'm like, I think it's going to be okay. Where I'm so used to more being more of a directing type, collaborating, delegating. Hmm. Which I guess, you know, for context, I mean, first of all, it has been six, seven, eight years since I've like put pen to paper, period. I mean, I write tons of notes down, but like I have not genuinely, I guess outside of the comic that we did last year, but I was collaborating with somebody in the room the whole time. That would be you, Grace. All right. So I don't know. I think it's just a, a couple of really different things we did pitch the the book to our team on tuesday Mm -hmm. um getting a little bit of feedback so far Uh, i think people seem to be behind it um i hope that they're being critical and i hope that they do believe this is the right thing for us to do first to get ourselves out there and we're doing a slice of life uh, romantic comedy, but with you know, with a little bit of a twist, lots of fantasy elements, lots of cringy moments, um, and it's based on, you know, <laughs> yours truly. inspired by a, uh, a true events of when I was in college. So I think maybe there's a part of that where I'm like, just keep even now still questioning if it's good enough, you know. Um, and as I'm writing it and I'm reading it out loud. I think it's good yeah but it's, it's a different it's thing it's a very different thing when you're putting yourself out there i think right than when you're working for somebody else so oh yeah maybe i'm just more <laughs> scared which totally makes sense like showing a first draft i can't even imagine like i never do that but like I, uh, my equivalent to that is like doing a piano piece before i like practiced it for like a month like that's so embarrassing um (laughs) and it's just you it's you and like i feel it's so personal yeah actually you know what else i'll say because i don't really think because i already don't think i i I already don't think that i'm a strong writer it's not one of my best uh skill sets in addition i have encouraged and conditioned everybody at the company to be extremely (laughs) honest honest so yeah so I can't even be like, hey, that that hurt, you know? But I'm has any of the feedback the hurt beating. so far? Have you been well, taking a beating? Like inside? I think literally every single moment of it. This is mainly why oh, I wow. don't like writing. I think it's bad. Interesting. When I hear somebody else criticize it, it kills me just because I already, you know, if I failed... 
almost doubly because that means I failed to see that it was bad before they saw that it was bad. You know? Mm. Which is really hard to do. <laughs> but yeah, I get it. Yeah, of course. But like that's what yeah, I yeah. pride that's my whole that's my our job here is prediction and stuff. And yeah, so yeah. it just it, it is very humbling experience, but I think the process of like I write something and then you and I can workshop it because I think it's mm-hmm easier and then you know af- only after that would we find it presentable probably going to give us our best shot and then of course we have to remember like our team is supposed to do their job they're supposed to Critique be it. ruthless about it yeah 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 but definitely a different kind of emotional separation mm-hmm. that i have to do and I'm not saying I can't do it. I'm saying this is new and it is untrained and it is, you know, I, I need some, I, I need to just keep going. It, it honestly makes me think of my friend Shelby, who's a writer in Hollywood where I'm like how so impressed with how she can just write and write and write and she'll send it to me. She'll send me her trash for me to, to, to work on. And I think that it takes so much courage that I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I have a newfound appreciation for how the, how how just amazing this woman is and and her work, you know what I mean? So like, if you you're good enough, you'll get there. You know, you get there at the end of the day, and that's the only thing that matters. Like the public doesn't see the 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 the, the, the muck. It, it's so interesting th- this whole process. That's what's been I think affecting me the the last like sort of two weeks. On the good side, I've actually been able to build in a little bit of writing into my morning routine, which I actually think is great. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah. As painful as it is, that's yeah. the only fun. The only fun time is in the morning because it's like, you know, I got the jams on. I'm waking myself up, and I know it's ending soon. It's not like I sit here with, you know, hours and hours to write every day. So right, right. You know, um, I feel like yeah. I can relate to that in the aspect of, like, I feel like just acting school felt like that when because yeah, I think getting your any kind of performance. Well, actually, I was going to say any kind of performance critiqued, but no, like, because, like, getting my dancing critiqued is different from getting my acting critiqued. Like, dance is just, you're doing moves, mechanical. I mean, there is an aspect of, like, putting your emotionality and personality into it, but when you're acting and then you have to, like, reflect on it, especially when it's, like, not recorded. Okay, well, when it's recorded, it's so painful to watch yourself when it's not recorded and I just have to like think about what I just did and then someone's critiquing it and it's like me and it's like, Oh, the worst. I think it's just hard. It's so hard. Yeah. It's hard to not take it personal. I think exactly. It feels so personal and it's really not. And like, I'll go to the point where like in acting classes, eh, so toxic, even if with, without a toxic teacher, it's like when someone else is getting, Maybe that's another episode there. I feel like there's a can <laughs> of worms ready to be opened. When there's another, like, it's like when I am being critiqued and then I go sit down and watch another scene happening and some other person is getting yeah. praised, like, immediately I'm like, oh, it has nothing to do with me. And yet I'm like, oh, they think I'm bad because they think the other person is good. And it's it's totally. so messed up. You Ooh. know, this, this reminds me we were so talking about, uh, <sighs> I've been definitely going through strong emotions during this process and i say it as vague as that because it is just strong emotions in all different directions but Mm. we were talking about anger the other day which made me laugh because like anger is the the emotion that i most closely connect with i would say and And then then, i was like what's underneath then since anger is secondary emotion which i had to look it up basically (laughs) the the, the secondary emotion is just anger is usually caused caused by something yeah something kicks into anger the anxieties the whatever like basically it's a it's some fear-based thing is what it comes down to oh i'm not good enough that's probably what it generally is for me Mm. because that's the main thing i care about is being good that my time and my investment is worth it yeah that my choices matter right which means you if, if my choices matter that means they've got to be good choices etc cetera, etc cetera. you can go down the line i'm not good enough yeah, i think yeah. is the thing um that's kind of being put to the test by starting this business by starting 
to tell stories actually to the public. I mean, it feels good to get in the game, but now I understand the fear and why so many people quit. I'm hoping that I've done enough work on myself through this whole process to just stick with it and believe. I think the other thing I'm learning, which is hard for me, is 100% there ha you have to be a little like delusional. Mm. Well, they do say that like people who have depression are just more realistic and people who like are generally like happier are more delusional. So like I did not know. Yeah. That. I, yeah, yeah. There's like a study, That's I mean, really I don't sad. know the exact <laughs> That's depressing. I know. <laughs> I know. I I learned that in my psych class I was like, wow, okay. Um, because yeah, they're need, like, you need a little bit of delusion to be happy. I or something like that. So like, yeah, that makes sense. You need a little bit of delusion to be able to like take this to the next level, which is like, do that. I, <laughs> I think you just have, cause you, and you yeah. know what? I feel like we have definitely seen and experienced this because on the other side, when we're the cynics, when we're walking around the comic cons and we're like, all these people suck. Or when we're reading the webtoons that we're going to compete against, we're like, these are so bad or whatever, we're th whatever, you all think in your heads, right, about your competition. It is all of a sudden, and then you're saying it to yourself, oh, bro, if I just made one of these, we'd crush it because, like, these are so bad. And now I'm I here. I never think that. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Now I'm here uh, where I'm like, oh, my God. Like, now I'm kind of, I'm actually going to put it out there and actually yeah. compete, which yeah. means you have to Scary. be, yeah, you have to be ready to Scary. potentially lose. And I think that's all it is, probably because of the amount of effort that we're going to put in, you know, it would be very disappointing to not see the fruits of that labor, which is a very real possibility. All it comes down to, though, is the perseverance. Like, if you are actually good enough, it is a numbers game, right? There's no way that you could make a million amazing videos and not one of them, you know what I mean, works. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's, that's kind of what I have to look at it at, which means it's got to be a longer game. You know, January's done. We, we flew through a month. Oh, my God. It's crazy. And it's usually a long month. Yeah, so what a, what, a, what a sort of interesting time, and we'll see what happens this year. I think one of the best parts about doing this podcast is it's just what's happening in the moment, so yeah. we can't tell the future, but sure enough, if, if six, eight months we're complaining about how much client work we have or whatever. Which I'm sure we will be. We'll look back and be like, damn, we should have appreciated this quiet time more. Do you feel better today? As opposed to like this week. Today, I think I'm tired. I think, you know, this was the last uh, week of my current training block. I have also been without caffeine for probably like two weeks now. And I'm still just tired in the morning. Dragon. Mm. Um, so I'm working on those things. I don't know what the next few weeks will bring, but I'm going to keep my head down. This is, I think it's just time to just do the work. But yeah, I guess another small thing that happened this week is we got monetized too on YouTube. That, I guess, was a sign of progress. Did we mention that? Well, we might have mentioned it last week, but this week we actually started. It actually started, as in we got approved. Oh, okay, we probably got okay. approved. So if you're tracking this, we got paid from the Shorts Fund, <laughs> and then we got approved to be part of the YPP. So we, got, we, we are a YouTube partner, but now the last step is the Shorts ads are going to kick in in February, and we're going to start receiving add revenue from the shorts we're excited to learn about that too and again this is all a game of learning this is going back to the sidewalks um the webtoons pitch but this week i had fun um we were gonna pitch it and then we were just gonna do it with the studios team like the straight shot studios team which is just like a producer illustrator writer and then we opened it up to everyone else at Straight Shot Post and the interns to see if anyone wanted to come. And a bunch of people showed up so that it became like a presentation. So then we were like, oh, gosh, we thought we were just going to be talking. So then I rushed to do uh, make like a pitch deck. And I haven't done something like that. That felt like school. That felt like, oh, my gosh, I forgot that the deadline is tomorrow. Let me rush it. And <laughs> I was doing it like in between work, trying to like finagle it and I, I thought I was gonna hate it but I actually had a lot of fun doing it so that was fun a highlight of my week 
<laughs> I think I really do think it made such a difference in the uh, in the presentation, which I will take full blame for. As in, what do you mean? she at, Grace asked me. I'll just I'm gonna own up to it. Grace asked me last week what I wanted to do. I said I want oh, to tell the yeah. team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said I want to have everyone. a meeting. I want to have a meeting, and I wanna I, I want to pitch it to the studio team. Set it up for next week. Then the next morning I came in and said, hey, actually, you know what? Let's do a proper deck presentation. Push it. She's like, oh, well, I can't get that ready by next week. I said, all right, then push it a week. Then on Monday, <laughs> I said, psych, I want both. I want it tomorrow and I want the deck if we no, can. No, 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 no. You said, psych, I want it tomorrow. We don't need a pitch deck. And then, like, it'll just be chill, like, whatever. And then after, like, a few hours later, like, it's end, the end of Monday and we want to do this on Tuesday and you're like, yeah, I mean, like, we can make a Bible. Like, we can... It was so unclear. It was like, we can make a Bible, but, like, it's for us. And I was like, okay, so this is for us, so I don't have to focus on making it presentable tomorrow. And you were like, well, I don't know. Like, make it kind of present... And I was like, what? So I just decided to, like, go all in and make it presentable. And I was like, you know what? It turned out great. <laughs> yeah, the team definitely <laughs> thought we were working on that for months, by the way. There's no... Like, I, I can't... I, th- I want to ask the interns. Well, actually, to be fair, like, the information in there we worked on and it's like from your past and like the information was there so just i i just made it pretty like that's easy but like the information if we had to have thought of that on the fly that i would not have done that (laughs) yeah i guess i guess that's true yeah thanks to but anyway 12 year old 12 years not 12 yeah 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 for starting for giving us a kickstart i'll I'll (laughs) add that some of the fun of it was thinking back to that time and I was like, wow, look at the things I prioritized, the details oh that I chose to wait, give them. Wait. It was just I so want interesting. To, I have something to say about this. Um, oh. So Sophie's film, right? Um, so we always come back to this topic. Um, Sophie interned here and I'm producing her uh, thesis film. She's at NYU, she's a student. Um, so we talked to this guy who we, we were trying to find a line producer and we talked to this guy and he seemed like chill to do it. And then we found out he's a sophomore at NYU um, over and we were like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, and then we wanted to meet with him in person. So we did yesterday and I really didn't have any like film and TV friends when I was at NYU, all my friends were in the drama department. So I know like very well the drama vibe, but I don't know the film vibe. But I experienced hardcore what the NYU film dude vibe was. And I was <laughs> like, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not a negative thing. Like he was super sweet. And like, I was like, you're awesome. Um, but it was just so interesting. Like I was like, this is probably what Dale's talking about. And this is what he means when you that like you're going to get your bubble burst when you graduate and like i don't know like just like the things and okay i i have a big thing about this since i was little in like elementary school middle school high school college whatever i remember like being in a classroom and having like an upperclassman even in elementary school like in third grade like a fifth grader comes in the classroom and says to say hi to the teacher and they're like hey acting all like you know like buddy buddy with the teacher and being like oh what are you guys studying fractions oh like I'm on like (laughs) multiplication. That's so, you know, like, and that would always piss me off so much. Like, so like, you don't understand. Like, I was like, I will never be that person. I will come in here and treat everyone like they're not like younger or dumber than me. I'm going to treat them like an equal. So then I always got so mad about that. And so (sighs) back to this, when um, we're in this meeting and like one of the, one of our producers is like 24 and is working at a production company. So she's experienced. And like after the meeting, we were both like, what? Cause like we're the only people out in the real world. And I was like, I don't even have a place to say this cause I just graduated. But like I even even at my stage of just having graduated, I sensed like the college bubbleness of it, um, of how he was talking. And she was, and I'm like, I'm sure it's so much more dramatic of a feeling for you being like way many more years out of college. And she was like, yeah, like I couldn't believe it. And we were talking about it. But again, like it comes down to like, I, I felt that, but like it's my life's mission not to be like, ah, you'll you're, you're you'll you'll see what the real world is kid like he was talking about like 
trying to get an internship and how he was so nervous about it and like my instinct was like shut up you'll be fine but then I was like no like that's hard like yeah good luck you know that is my life's mission I, w- I wonder if anyone relates to that because I yeah, like sure. I don't know why but that's because I did I was the same thing. thing too I used to get so pissed being the younger guy I had my my age for years I think probably because what I realize now is in most cases it is true but but it still it still pissed me off because I was like no I'm more capable like obviously that's what I thought when I was younger too there's two ways to look at it there's the people who are just like they looking for any reason to think they're better than somebody separately when I t- I'll talk about the psychological differences I will talk about the things you guys emphasize that will change as you as you know because we've done HR here we know a lot of people come in with the same fears the same thoughts the same questions right yeah no but what I'm okay what I'm saying though is I understand that um but when people are like like I'm talking about some experience I'm having and then it feels so invalidated when people are like oh you're worried about that like wait till you're at this age and you're worrying about this and then I and then that, that's so frustrating so I never want to do that to anyone um even if I do think their problems are stupid because like I'm like I know that whatever I'm struggling with now I'm gonna look back on it when I'm like 30 and think it's so dumb but it's hard now um and like and then I like get such massive respect for people like my parents who like don't laugh at me and who are like yeah it's hard I'm sure and then years later I'm like remember when I was like 22 and I was complaining about that thing it was so dumb and they're like yeah it was but like it was hard and they're so like validating about it I'm like that is that's so nice of them I would yeah I don't think I'd be like that I'd be like (laughs) I don't know I mean I would the thing is I would understand I tell it to my little cousin all the time I'm like here's the thing it doesn't matter what I say because you're still going to care about X things, right? Like you're this age, you're, this is what you're, this is the normal thing. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you, I'm going to tell, I could tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you exactly the truth. None of this matters. This is the only thing that does matter. And if you just focus on this, you will get far ahead of everybody else. But I also know that it's irrelevant (laughs) as in like, it doesn't matter if I give you the answers because your brain, like this just not, not i mean it's a one in one million chance somebody actually is gonna go wow you're right and completely somehow mature beyond their own means right then Um, why do you say it though for that one in one million chance well it's more it's also because if they ask me a question how why would i not tell them the truth that's it's more about principle than it is interesting because i am trying to figure out how do you move how do you actually move the needle Right, which I think we're learning a lot as environment, which that's why storytelling is important because if you're consuming the right media and, and, and getting involved with that community, that's going to have the most impact. If you're only consuming the grass is greener type of content on social media and TikTok and seeing other people blow up and that's your world and you feel bad mm. about that, guess what? That's going to reinforce itself. So it's funny because Gary Vaynerchuk was talking about this where he's like, you know what's on my social? Sunshine and rainbows. And I just (laughs) laughed because I was like, mine too, right? Mine too, because we, we are the ones that have control over it. So if I only click on things that will make me feel good and happy and proud and make me want to push forward, it'll, it'll reinforce that. So it's a tool that people don't realize that they can actually control the environment around them to help push them where they want. Again, this sort of like, I'm trying to build the cage for me, the monkey, right? I'm trying to build the, mon- the, 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 the beast's cage um, <laughs> to try to push me towards the person that I want to be. That's why even though I'm going through some of these different emotional states right now, because of the work that I've done prior to like prepare for these things, I guess, that even when they're happening, I'm still experiencing these emotions to your point. Like I'm not denying the feelings or invalidating them i'm aware Hmm. that i have them i'm also aware that they don't actually mean much in the grand scheme so i can work on them in that manner as opposed to not being aware and then they consume my life right yeah and then then my decision making gets weaker 
So it, I don't think it changes the experience, but it definitely shortens the gap between the painful experience and then the like recovery and hopefully growth part of it, right? That's the gap that's that's being shortened by, you know, doing the right work and and having the right environment around you. So if you build the world correctly, and like the world in this case would be our little company, and I've said it before, the expectation isn't that everybody's on every day. But the expectation is that the people that are on can lift up the people that aren't when needed and vice versa, like when that happens. So today being an example of like really not wanting to get up for the second half of work, really being in a certain place. And it's just like there's somebody else in the room who's like still got it going, still working hard and still pushing you to get up. Like my worst day is not so bad because I have an environment that's going to push me forward and not let me just stop. Right. Like, even if I didn't go as far today, I still move forward. It ends up becoming a community thing, ultimately, in my eyes. And, uh, and yeah, now I do feel better. Because, <laughs> like, it's, one of, it's just an awareness thing. But that's why I don't have a problem telling young kids that... And I don't say it's irrelevant. I say, just so you know, it feels this way now, but in the grand scheme, it doesn't matter. That's the truth. I'm not saying you can't feel it. I'm trying to make you aware that even if you do feel it, it's not actually that meaningful. It's just a feeling. Maybe it helps somebody, but maybe not. You know, I don't know. As a very sensitive person. I mean, I just always think back to like when I was a kid. Now I can see it. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know you mean well. But like, I know everyone means well by it. And they're trying to like help me. But when I was a kid, it would piss me off so much. Yeah, but you're a kid. You were a kid. How would you really know what it meant? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but like also like people like, I don't know how people, people have that like maturity. Do ever does everyone have that maturity to be like, oh, they're trying to help me. Like, no, that's what, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I wish, bro. When I find it, I scoop it up. How do you think we're building such a team? But yeah. I think you've yeah. seen me outside the company act very differently also. Yeah, it's my favorite yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, because again, you have to know your audience and it's empathy, right? But like, yeah, there's a big difference here. I don't mind telling all of you guys the future because some of you guys with enough repetition are going to start to pick up on it, I hope, which gives us an advantage, okay? Um, but yeah, certainly a fun one. This turned into a, a, an interesting one. I wonder how we'll look back on it grace um in time i look back and be like i was an idiot <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah so will i right so will i um as most things go so let's wrap it up pro tip everything is temporary there's one thing there's one thing of like knowing it and there's one thing of like having your soul accept that so I'll go into therapy and be like, boom, boom, boom. I know my problems. And she's like, yeah, but do you accept it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. For me, awareness does a lot for me. We'll just leave it at that then. Everything is temporary. And uh, the real pro tip might be figuring out how to accept that. That pertains to Especially like this, this month feeling slow and all that too. So mm -hmm. it's good. It's like all around. Okay. Question. Um, my question for Grace. I don't know what my question is. Oh, I don't have my cards today. <laughs> <laughs> my question for Grace is, um, how much do you believe in the Zodiac? Oh my God. It's so funny that you asked that today <laughs> because yesterday, <laughs> Yesterday, when I was at Sophie's place having this like producer meeting, we all went around and talked about our zodiacs. And you sh there's this like app called CoStar that like I feel like is like the general thing that everyone around me has that like gives you a little description. But this girl gave one of the producers gave us another app that like gives you so much more in depth. And I was reading it yesterday and I was like, I felt so seen. I was like, oh my God, this is so accurate. It's scary. Like, each aspect of my life it was the most in-depth horoscope i've ever read and so <laughs> i feel like prior to that i mean i like know i'm not like 
I don't think that that's like it's like real real like the way that what my is, father whoa, believes whoa, whoa. in God I don't believe in mm. horoscopes but I think it's so fun to like play along to them that's where I stand I, I think I have the same outlook I mean it's funny because I will say though I haven't done enough I don't know what the science is behind it though to be fair it just doesn't sound like there's science behind it, which is why if there isn't science behind it, then I'm not going to even, I just don't let it even enter the realm of possibility. Even though I love being a Scorpio on a Libra cusp and everybody says crazy stuff about me and it makes me extra mysterious. I got to know the rest of your chart though. I want to know the rest. Of, do you know what time you were born? I don't know. I'll text my mom, you know, you'll find okay, out. Okay, I can ask her. Yeah. My point is that I agree. I don't, if there's no science behind it, then I, you know, won't. So that's the thing is like, I, well, this could get controversial, but like. But I haven't done the research before people yell at me. So like there might be science behind it, you know. Yesterday, Sophie had said like, cause like they're saying that horoscopes are becoming like the new religion for young people. Cause like every gen like generation has for the most part, something to believe in, like some kind of thing that's like existential to believe in. And it's like horoscopes for this generation. It seems like. Um, don't quote me on that, but, um, and then Sophie was mentioning how, like, the position of the moon has a direct, like, effect on the way the water moves, like the ocean, um, and that's, that's science. That's true. Yeah, um, And so then I was like, I was like, interesting, so then, like, I feel like this is like a, I don't believe it, but if I were to believe something, I feel like this is the most tangible thing, because it's actually the planet's that actually like you can see um and their positions so like i feel like for me uh, yes but know, how I'm does that get affect it, you like, biologically right like even if that even if there's a, a a change in gravity it's how does that affect you biologically psychologically in your dna that's all because when know. you look at something like myers-briggs it's not saying it's got it's going backwards it's not saying oh this is who you are it's saying you tell us, and we'll, mm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's tribalism, right? And, and, and it's both basic form, so that's why it works. Like you said, you feel seen. You're part of a tribe, a community. There's other people like you. Well, is it part of a tribe? Because it's like everyone has such a unique one reading, and so I'm like... Kind of, except that you're all Aquarius, you're all Scorpio, you're all Leo. I mean, Leo's I guess that unite. thing too. Like, I guess so. I guess that thing does exist. But like, I'm more so, like, well, yesterday we were reading about like, she was like, she was reading it for me. And she was like, oh, so you like, you really value like varied social settings. And I was like, I think I do. <laughs> like you need to be in multiple, like you don't want to be in one social setting. You want this like variety because you need different outlets. And I was like, oh. That is something I have discussed re as of recent. I will add one thing to this as we, as we wrap it up because you owe me a question. But the one thing I'll add is what's funny is I'm so now like I guess all about this sort of like, I don't know, social engineering or something where I'm like regardless of what I was, I would definitely be looking at it being like, wait, what do I like and want and actually think is a good value? And what is not, and then I'll just be like, great, so I'm just going to like not do that thing anymore and only do that thing and just engineer as best as I could what I wanted, if that makes sense. I um, hope we can find that exact logic in your horoscope reading somewhere. That would be amazing, right? <laughs> um, I'd be like, But that also, makes sense. I think because no matter what, it's one of those things where that's the, the, the problem with those things is you're like, Ah, uh, yes, now all my bad behaviors are validated too, of course. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what? Well, how about just changing? Well, that's why they talk about like the unevolved versus evolved, like like they do the Myers-Briggs, but like unevolved versus evolved horoscopes where like these are the problems that these horoscopes have and this is how you can contend with it and make it better. So there are ways to fix it. But I guess my answer is like, I don't like believe, believe. <laughs> It's just fun. I was curious. I was curious. Um, all my horoscope friends are going to come for me. Be like, what? You're such an Aquarius. How dare you? <laughs> um, okay. My question. Oh, God. I haven't done like a question out of my brain in such a long time. 
I've had the cards. Um, if you were to go to space, like where you are right now, for ever, like leave planet Earth for the rest of your life, like would you go by yourself or like who would you take? Would I leave ship? planet Earth? <laughs> to be on a ship. I, yeah, I mean, I think that would be a crazy experience to go to like space. To, to never come back. And never come back? That's a dead... <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, you know, if you had to go to space... Like, okay, no, let me, wait, let me why repaint the picture. That? What am I... Why would I do if that? planet Earth is, like, ending, if planet Earth is ending and you have the opportunity to, like, just go to space, figure it out. Yes, and I'm you're going. gonna go to you're gonna go, but like, would you go al- alone or would you take someone with you? Because like, you're gonna be in that spaceship. If I have the for option, undi- why, wouldn't, why wouldn't I take somebody with me if I have the if, option? If you're well, like, if you're gonna be in a spaceship for an undetermined amount of time, and like, would you like want to be alone or like, I that's my curiosity. No, you take someone. Who would you take? Oh, bro, no, I'm not picking between. No, 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 you can't. I can't ask that. All right, you, you know what? It? You know what? Who would I take if the planet was dying? I would pick the person best suited to keep the species alive. Wow. I was, I didn't, wow. That's what I would have to do. You could pick multiple people, but you would just choose one? No, you did, you changing the question at each level. No, I said, who would you take? No, if I had, dude, if if we were going extinct, I think yeah. it would have to be my duty. And I somehow was given the choice to figure out there's one spaceship <laughs> and there's a yeah. hundred people that can go on that spaceship. It's got <laughs> to be the hundred most qualified people to push this, to push it, to, to, to rebuild, right? Wow. And how would you know that? Well, Grace, I don't have a good answer for that. Luckily, I don't have to make that decision <laughs> um, because okay. how you would determine that, well, I guess the first person would be the person that would help me best determine that, right? Like the, someone that totally understands like, because you have to understand what it would actually take to survive. So you need like, you actually, what is that? You need food, shelter, you need water. So you need people, you need agriculture people, right? Like for sure. Mm. And science, agriculture people. Um, at this point, you definitely need computer scientists because that will just accelerate if we can the process. And you need engineers to keep the ship alive. Okay, so you need people that are trained in space, you know, and how to live in space and how to survive just on that station, how to rebuild and make sure that ship is alive long enough to give us a shot. Um. And then the beautiful thing now is with AI, actually, if you can equip it properly, that basically has a knowledge of, if you think about it, like all of our art and all of our literature. So if you're using technology properly, you wouldn't need, this is sad, but you wouldn't need any of the artists or poets or any of that because that has all now been stored on technology so that we could at least re-inspire and rebuild that later. You need the things that, can, that the robots cannot do that needs to be done. So you actually need manual labor because like the robots aren't even that good enough to probably fix the ship on its own. Do you see what I'm saying? Whoa. Yeah. You I thought asked, you were going to be like my mom, my dad, <laughs> but you were like agriculture. Yeah, but you, you made this situation <laughs> that the, 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 the human race was at stake. And I know my... F- I believe I know my parents well enough that they would look at me. Oh, yeah. They would say, do it, Dale. Yeah. And they would say, dude, you, they would say to me, do what you need to do. We had a good one. If that's what it came down to. My brother, on the other hand. I'd be like, (laughs) bro, take me. What you, what you mean? (laughs) Um, but yeah, what a, what a interesting question but yeah i think you'd have to have a level five leader you know you'd have to have somebody if i was given that responsibility i would have to put the thing before me and make sure that everything was suited the real question would be is if that's the case would i make the cut 
Now that's mm. some deep shit there. I don't think. And we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching oh, the Straight okay. Shot Podcast. We'll see you next week. Peace.